So right now we have gone through completing uh, natural planks, adding inputs, we've we'll discussed speeds. Uh, we'll actually do complex areas and priority rules. So in the example here, you just notice that in the simulation, uh, vehicles um, are, do not actually um, read each other and uh, I'll actually put them on top of each other. So to fix that, you can either do it through conflict areas solely uh, or using priority rules just yourself uh, and rely only on priority rules, but uh, there is quite a significant difference between the two as well as proper applications for each. Uh, conflict areas should typically be used um, for simple maneuvers, simple conflicts, one to one or one to two conflicts that are simple enough for a driver to uh, do. That includes, and when you, by the way, um, left click it, uh, you will see any overlap between a link uh, and a connector or a connector with a, between links and connectors really, is defined as an overlap or any two links crossing each other. This is uh, considered a conflict area. So any overlap between links and connectors, um, you will get a hashed area uh, where you can define conflict behavior. There are a few options in this end. The uh, yellow yellow is um, a passive passive complex, so nothing happens pretty much. If you control right click, hold control right click, you'll find a, a the colors changing to green and um, red. And what that means green is the approach or the uh, movement we're giving priority to, and uh, red is the conflicting minor movements that should yield to the major movements. If you control and right click again, you'll be able to switch between both of them. If you do control and right click again, you'll get something called a uh, undetermined conflict. What an undetermined conflict is really depends on arrival rate for vehicles. So if the first vehicle arrived and it's blocking this lane, for example, the other vehicle will not be able to enter. If you have a, an undefined or undetermined uh, conflict right here, for example, between the pedestrian lanes and your left turn lane, you can, that, that would mean that whoever comes first will get the priority. So that is what an undetermined uh, conflict means. Undetermined conflicts are the proper conflicts that you should be setting up for diverge maneuvers. So when a lane opens up to two lanes, you would assign an undetermined conflict because if a vehicle comes to the end of this lane, it's a long vehicle blocking a portion of the middle lane here. You want to be able to tell the person that uh, drivers will not be able to proceed through, so they should probably try to stretch to the rightmost lane to be able to go through. So that is what you'll be able to do with a um, an undetermined conflict. So typically, it's for diverging locations. Um, I'll switch this back. First, select the conflict and then to me, that other part, in reality, vehicles can actually squeeze themselves, so I'm not really uh, going to assign it to undetermined. I'll just leave it as passive. Do the same thing here. And typically for all diverge conflicts. Now, when you get a right turn lane uh, merging into through traffic, of course, through traffic get the priority. So control, right click and you've got green for true and red for the right lane traffic. Let's assume for the sake of just discussion that this is an unsignalized intersection, no signal, and we want to code it using conflict areas. If we go down, let's say north, south is main road, east, west is minor. So the first for through traffic, it should take the priority. Well, of course, if you get the pedestrian, you yield to the pedestrian, so I'll go to the pedestrian lanes and make the priority for pedestrian. Follow the um, conflicts. So this is a conflict with, if you look at the line, and you can also simplify this by control A if you want, if you wish to. This is eastbound lane with northbound lane. We know that the eastbound is minor. Priority goes to major, which is north. Of course, if you have a signal that controls this, you do not need to set these up in the middle of the intersection because they're really controlled by the signal. So in this case, all tools get the priority. And you have probably a lot of cases like here, for instance, you have conflicts on top of each other. 
If you want to navigate between them, just press tab. It will help you out. Once it gets selected, you can control right click and change it accordingly. Is this clear? So the through gets all the uh, priorities. You can do the same thing, of course, for the southbound when you are doing the southbound left turn. Anything that's coming from east and west will have to yield to the southbound. And um, of course, the southbound left turn will have to yield to the through traffic. I'm not going to do the, the example conflict areas all from scratch. We do have an, uh, a ready to go um, example, I believe. Just conflict areas. Uh, don't save changes. This is a complete file. And don't be um, concerned if you. Uh, this warning is because of a custom detail that I was trying to uh, create, and unfortunately, I'm copying the file. I did not copy the database with that, so but that does not really impact the simulation. Uh, so this is a complete example of conflict areas coded all the way. The use of conflict areas this way is not proper because they are not going to work properly for complex complex like these. Typically, we would actually use priority rules to handle these kind of conflicts because uh, it's, it's better to use priority rules to check a conflict from a specific location. Like if you are a vehicle here, you want to check for all conflicts with traffic. And let's say you have a permissive move. So your pedestrians are working with the left turn. You have to stop here and check for pedestrians. You cannot do that for conflict areas. For conflict areas, you have to reach the conflict point and check the, for the conflict. And that's not proper because you'll be standing in the middle of the road. So we would actually avoid using conflict areas, for example, with permissive left turns. And the reason is we want to set a line here for vehicles to check different conflicts. We want to check the crews and check the pedestrians at the same time. And then if all is clear, proceed. This is something you can do with prior tools, but not for conflict areas. We'll be just playing the simulation to show you how this impacts with in complex scenarios like this one with um, a conflict areas. Um, and actually, let's add, um, you can add stop signs to the simulation. We have assumed I would remove the existing stop signs, so we actually can code them in my roadway. We said that the major roadway is north south. So these north-south vehicles are not going to stop. To add a stop sign to uh, your network, make sure you are under network obvious selecting stop signs. Make sure it's active. The same way you add a design speed to session. Control, hold that, right click. You have created a stop sign. Now, you can link stop signs to controllers so you can perform right turns in red, but that will not do now. We just Place, uh, place typical stop signs, and you know what? You can just copy them here. Very simple. And this is four lane. You know what? Let's copy the four lane. Scene. So priority rules is, is really a way to manage conflicts. Uh, the uh, and we'll get to how to use that. It, it's proper, more proper to use priority rules for conflicts. Conflicts where you check more than a conflict, where you are checking for conflicts from a distance. What you do is you set up a stop line, or a yield line, in fact, and that yield line, from that point, you check for certain aspects, vehicle speeds and direction from this point, this point, this, and uh, with the, from the pedestrian lines. We'll code it, but uh, I will get to it. The function of priority rules is the same as the conflict areas, but conflict areas do not work well in complex um, conflicts. Uh, priority rules do have uh, or do have the capacity to add uh, some customization to uh, what kind of checks you're doing. Get in the driver, and in this one, it's trying to navigate the first conflict area. Then another overlapping conflict area comes in. This one will become itself confused. Drivers in this one will be confused. Um, and I've coded this example fully with um, uh, just conflict areas to show you how the simulation would look like. If you just play it, and you see vehicles arriving to the network, you will see some weird thing happening. Uh, typically, in this scenario, I would only limit the use of conflict areas to diverging traffic and simple conflict like the right through lanes here.
So look at this network and see how, if, if you see this behavior making sense or gaps or anything in terms of buffer behavior, see a car is standing in the middle of the intersection. You don't, you see some wavelength changes too because drivers get confused of the amount of conflict areas. So it's not really proper to code um, conflict areas in such, in such manner. And again, in, in this specific example, if I was to code it right, I would limit the use of conflict areas to these diverging conflicts and to the simple one-to-one -one conflicts here. The rest, if, if I have permissive phases, uh, this example is a signal, it's really a signal, um, because it's really complex uh, in terms of conflicts. And it's a wide, a very wide intersection. Um, if you're, in, and we're lucky that all the turns in this example are fully protected, they are not permissive, so we don't really need to worry about coding things within the intersection. But I'll still assume that this is an unsignaled example and try to code this solely just using priority rules. So you guys will see the difference. Of course, it's not coded uh, perfectly. So I'll stop the simulation at this point. And let's just get rid of all conflict areas. So I'll, one quick way to do that, just show them in last. And actually shift control down, you select all, control, Hmm, I should be able to select this. Oh, my apologies. Go under status, select the whole thing, and uh, just hold control, left click, and uh, make it passive. So I got rid of all conflict areas. I'll just go back and just fix the small ones I need them to be undetermined. It's up to you if you want to decide this treaty. Um, if, it, if it was me, I would leave the other portion passive. But there's nothing wrong here. It's you gotta watch the simulation, make sure it's working right and adjust accordingly. In this case, this is really a full merge, so you don't need to worry about conflicts. And that's the same case here. I'll, I don't have really traffic in this thing, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right. So if you uncheck conflict areas and be active in priority rules, Let's, in this case again, we know that, oh, this is a let's over stop sign from before. Let's uh, try to ask um, left turning vehicles here, once they do the stop sign, to check for conflicts in the through movement. So they will do the stop sign or the, uh, and then they will try to proceed to the middle of the intersection, right? And right here, as long as you're active in predator rules, control hold, right click, you'll have a yield point put down for you. I want to check conflicts from this oncoming lane. And once you left click, you will get a dialog box. Typically at this uh, high speed uh, roadway, a typical gap that works better is either four or five seconds. In fact, Edmonton's um, actually ask uh, consultants to model five second gaps. Um, I wouldn't, to be honest, use the full to four seconds uh, in VSIM. I'll change that to, uh, sorry, three seconds, I'll change that to four. I wouldn't worry about clearance because I'm, it will be checking for um, either uh, a gap from that point of four seconds without oncoming traffic or for a clearance of five meters. If there is a vehicle standing here in five meters, if this car is not going to proceed. In reality, I may actually go and do this as a zero. And the maximum speed that some is checking for is 180. You're checking for all speeds, and you're not going to have any car that's driving um, above 180 because of these drive speed decisions you've set. So that ultimately means you're checking for every single vehicle passing by. So you have drawn the first one. Click OK. It's only checking for the first lane now. 
Now I'm going to assign a second one. So see this lane is coming here. Uh, for, so from this point, check for another four second gap. Zero the clearance and hit OK. I still want to check for pedestrians. In this case, I'm not going to use speed because pedestrians have an extremely low speed. I'm going to check for clearance. So again, this lane is turning here at the beginning. At the beginning, I'll check. I'll zero the minimum gap and change the clearance to, um, let's say, 15 meter. That's a quite a wide intersection. Um, let's see if this works. Yeah, perfect. I don't care about the speed because the pedestrian speeds are lower definitely than 180 km per hour. So it's checking for every speed. Don't bother doing that. So it's telling you I'm checking for pedestrians. When a pedestrian comes to this point, it will check this area for conflicts. So any car will be standing here, checking now for three things. This lane, five second or four second gaps. The other lane, another four second gaps when those two conditions are met. The third condition that has to be met is checking for this clearance. So no pedestrians are here. Also, I need to do that for another direction. So zero and I'll put 10 since that link is short. But in reality, you really want to increase this link a little bit. That should be fine, actually, because most of them, that's the corner of the intersection. So. so for the first lane, you have done this. Unfortunately, with priority rules, you cannot copy because it's really very specific. So you'll have to create a new one. So the other one, uh, again, make sure you are in priority rules. And make sure to click escape first because you're still in selection mode for this one. We'll double click somewhere outside. Do another one, new one. And you're checking for the same two conflicts. That's one. Again, five meters. Don't care about this. Okay. And that's two. Oh, my apologies. Four. And this is a zero. We'll have to repeat the same exercise. So. We'll do it for pedestrians. See, guys, this is why Vilsen takes time. Um, it, it really is like when you do a project in Vilsen, it may cost you as a company um, probably twice or three times the amount of time or effort that you'll be spending to do the same project using just Synchro. So um, consultants typically uh, just make proper decisions. For simple interactions, it's proper to use Synchro or Vistro capacity models. Um, and see, imagine yourself being the driver and actually the distance that you will be seeing yourself. And that's how you can determine the clearance. Um, it's really intersection specific. But you don't need, to, if, if your signal is fully protected, you do not, the signal itself will regulate conflicts. This is for permissive lifts. If you have a green solid um, wall and you're required to check for um, gas within traffic and for pedestrians. In this specific example, when we code the timing plan, you'll find out that it's completely protected. And we will not really have to do all of this. But again, we're doing conflict uh, priority rules so you guys can understand the difference and the use, when to use what, um, and use it properly for your projects. And um, just to show you how the, uh, actually the simulation would look like, I do have another example uh, coded fully with priority rules. But thanks, uh, please guys ask these kind of questions. These are really excellent questions. Okay, so I have a complete example set up with priority rules if you wanna look to how things would look like. And do not save changes. Now in this example, every thing is passive, that's perfect. And you can see how really the network can be extremely complex. And this is why this is really an extreme example, because this is a signalized intersection. It's not going to work really as a stop control intersection, but the amount of priority rules is really huge. 
One thing I want to show you guys is um, what if the receiving link, you have a big network, you have a set of intersections, you have, let's say you have an intersection somewhere here and your queue's back up and you want to ask vehicles not to enter the intersection if the receiving lane is full. You can still do that as well with a little trick with priority rules. So you can come in here, create a new priority rule, maybe at the location of a stop sign. And the same way we check for pedestrians, we check for a queue here. So if you, we are not checking for gaps anymore, we're checking for this distance and probably this is around um, eight or nine meters, so just nine meters and lower the speed to 20. When the speed drops in this section, lower than 20 kilometers per hour, that means a congested condition. Once you hit OK, well, that is not a huge distance, so I'll adjust it again. I'll probably just put it as 14 meters. So this lane, for vehicles within this lane, if you come in, you have to yield at this point and check first. If you see cars driving below 20 kilometers per hour in this section, you can have control depending on your, that, that's a simulation thing, check your simulation. If uh, vehicles do not respond quickly, you increase the distance a little bit or you lower the speed and so on and so forth. But typically I find 20 kilometers per hour to work most of the time. So if you find the end receiving lane having um, vehicles driving 20 kilometers per hour or lower, stop, don't proceed. You click OK, you do the same thing on the other direction, right around the stop sign. And do it like I did it right now, right after the stop sign, but you should actually place it right before the stop sign because you still want to obey the stop sign um, after or at the same time when you actually obey the yield point. So place it around the same area, even before and after, as long as it's very close, that should be fine. But if you place it far enough beyond the stop sign, if the vehicle passed the stop sign got the yield point, that may be okay. If it's the other way around, the yield point is first, and then the stop sign, that means the vehicle will check for conflicts, then stop, and then will not care about conflicts. So you don't want to have that situation. Um, I forgot to update the, put that at 14, and gap time of zero, I don't care about the gap time, speed's 20. And that's good. Now, this is a complete example. Uh, this, this is not gonna have any effect because I don't have other congestion sources that may block or queue up. But uh, check out the simulation with priority rules. It's a little bit neater than um, just conflict areas, but it's still messy. And this location is actually a signalized intersection and should be treated accordingly.